Okay, um, welcome back. Now we have some questions. Um, so I think it's um, a lot about the gifts. So some of these gifts, uh, questions on the gifts, actually we can address it when we study about the gifts, right? So uh, first question is, what is the difference between a gifting and a calling? Uh, simple. A gift is a manifestation, an expression of the Holy Spirit. A calling is uh, a, a ministry office, right? Or it could be something that he wants us to walk in as part of our life, right? And so, um, so that would be a basic difference. And what we see in Romans 11, uh, 29, the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, right? Talks about how we, um, so, um, so that is that is what it is. So a, a gifting is an expression of the Holy Spirit. And it's not just 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, it can be several other passages, like Romans 12 also talks about that. And uh, there's another passage also, I think, Ephesians, where we see the gifts um, the being mentioned there. The call is more to do with what, what God wants to do with your life. right? And, and the gifts can actually empower the call. And gifts can, the, and the mix of gifts can actually empower the call. Like for for example, if it's a pastoral calling, then the gifts of the spirit would actually empower that call to nurture, in order to um, you know bring in counsel and so on. Right? Okay. Another question: um, How can we know and identify a call in the body of Christ? Um, right? How does God distribute spiritual gifts? Okay. So so these questions, the, these two questions, we will address it. Uh, when we study, will God give me the gift I ask, or uh, does He distribute it? Okay, this also will, you know, we will understand it in context as we study more about the uh, gifts, which is our next topic baptism and gifts. So, how do I identify my spiritual gift? Okay, good questions. Thank you. How do we receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Okay, um, so it is by faith. He, the Lord Jesus is the one who baptizes us. He's the one who anoints us. So we see being filled, being anointed, being used interchangeably in the word. And uh, he's the one who fills us. So we ask the Lord, and he's the one who anoints us. And when we say anointing, it is for a particular purpose, a particular ministry. There's an anointing that goes with the call. Um, and so... Um, uh, so we receive by faith and in uh, faith in the Lord, right? We ask uh, and we receive. Okay, what else? Um, what is the seal of the Holy Spirit according to Second Corinthians 1? Yeah, so it, it, it talks about the mark of the Holy Spirit. It talks about actually the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I think there was a question about the indwelling. Yeah, just before that, right? So indwelling. So we are marked by the Holy Spirit, by His presence. And so, so, so if you look at Second Corinthians one and verse twenty-two, let's. Um, um, it says He has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee okay if you if you turn to um the uh, ephesians and um yeah ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14 uh, 13 and 14 again talks about the same thing um you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise right and then it says who is the guarantee of our inheritance um, until the redemption of the purchased possession of the to the praise of his glory. So that word seal refers to a signet ring, something uh, uh, um, that is a seal um, that is put on to say, this is my purchased possession, a seal of authority, right? Uh, which comes from a signet ring from a, from a monarch or a king, someone who's ruling. So we are his purchased possession. And the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is that evidence. And also, it is the guarantee of the redemption that is to come, the full redemption. Uh, redemption uh, of our bodies to be transformed, to be glorified bodies, and so on, right? So that's the, yeah, so that is the seal of the Holy Spirit, the seal of ownership, the signet ring. 
um, um, evidenced by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, I hope that helps. So the questions on the gifts, uh, specifically about the um, identification of the gifts and how does he distribute it, we will come to it, right? Okay, okay. So we're almost at the end of um, uh, uh, of that that section of how we receive the ministry gifts, uh, or sorry, how the Holy Spirit helps us in ministry. We saw that he empowers us to write on people's hearts. Okay, Second Corinthians 3 and verse 3. So he's the one who empowers us. Um, so Paul says that you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, but written not with ink, not on tablets of stone, but of the flesh, of the heart, by the Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit actually writes on people's hearts, brings transformation in the lives of people. Okay, let me just share the notes. Okay, so... Um, so... So he empowers us, or he writes, and the, and the same passage, Second Corinthians, um, chapter three, talks about how our sufficiency is from the Holy Spirit. Okay, the, our sufficiency to minister. Okay. He he makes us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, right? Um, Let's look at 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Okay, so he has made us sufficient, which means capable, able, right? And having all things required, needed to be ministers of the new covenant, right? To be ministers of the spirit, not of the letter, right? The contrast between the old covenant and the new, right? Okay. He has given us a more glorious ministry. The same passage talks about that and, uh, and how we minister by the Holy Spirit. The spirit gives life, which means that there is the active involvement, active engagement of God, the Holy Spirit, in all our ministry. Okay, so which means we need to depend. We need to actively expect, involve, be open to, be sensitive to, um, and give way for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's something that um, that's a privilege for us as New Testament believers, and uh, for all of us. And it's not only is it a privilege, but it's also a great uh, assurance, right? That the Lord He confirms the preaching of the word. He is there, very present, in order to minister with signs, wonders, mighty, mighty signs and wonders. He is there to do those works of transformation, which we cannot, we cannot, right? And that's why it says, he's the one who writes on people's hearts, right? not us. So we can't take the credit, right? So we don't have to put on the pressure also, right? Sometimes we think, no, I have to change that person. No, I have to do something. Well. All that we have to do is to be faithful. All that we do need to do is to prepare ourselves, be willing vessels, right? The preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue comes from, from God. So we, we need to, there's a role, there is a responsibility to prepare, but the actual transformation comes by the Holy Spirit. Actual change comes from the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. Um, and also we see that in the resurrection, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings life, quickens our mortal bodies. Okay. Now let's just back up a bit to, to look at 
um, being led by the Spirit of God. Okay, so each one of us, we have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. Okay, so uh, why do you think we need the leading of the Holy Spirit? Why do you think we need the leading of the Holy Spirit? We need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay. It's a very simple answer because we don't know everything, right? We don't know everything. He knows everything. We don't have all the answers. He has the answers. And he wants to be part of our lives, part of our ministry by leading us. He's a good shepherd. He leads us. Okay. So when, which means that when he leads, we need to follow. Like we need to be willing, we need to be obedient in order to follow. Okay? So we have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. Okay? When you look at Romans chapter 8, okay, um, and verses 14 to 16, okay, it says here, for as many as are led. Okay, let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, please. Everyone you can turn in your Bibles. Okay, 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, or children of God, right? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So he leads us. He witnesses to our hearts. He gives us that proof that we are children of God, okay? by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Right? So we have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. So look at this. It says, all those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Okay. So if you call yourself a child of God, if you're saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a son, I'm a child of God, then you have the privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, So which means that it is not just for some special people. It's not just for few. But this is for everyone who says, I'm a child of God. To be led by the Spirit of God. Okay, So we cannot say, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know we, of course, we need to learn. We need to learn to follow. We need to learn to obey. But from God's perspective, this leading is for everybody. To lead. To lead from where we are to where we need to be. To lead from immaturity to maturity. Right? The Holy Spirit wants to lead us. Right? So he leads us. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And uh, if you look at uh, Romans chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, uh, again, this aspect of witnessing. Okay, it says, I tell the truth in Christ, I'm not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he, he's talking about the Holy Spirit witnessing to his heart, to his conscience, Right, saying the Holy Spirit is witnessing. Okay, there is a witnessing that is happening. The other place also we saw uh, Romans eight also the Spirit Romans eight and verse sixteen, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit. So that's something that He does, and it is in line with being led. Okay, so He bears witness with our spirit. And which means that he gives information or brings information into our spirit and he gives that uh, assurance. He bears witness. Yes, you're a child of God. Yes, this matter is important. Yes, this is true. He bears witness with our spirit. Okay. So that's one of the ways by which the Holy Spirit leads us. Okay, um, so the important thing is this: now, how do I know that it is the Holy Spirit leading me, 
or it is my own emotions, right? My own good intentions. How do I know? Is it God speaking or is it me? Right? Is it my own thoughts? Is it my own imaginations? Like all of us have that, you know, that conflict. You know, is it me or is it God? Right? Because I, I want to be careful because I want to do what God wants me to do. And I just don't want to do off, you know, go off and launch off and do something on my own. Right? So we all have that kind of a conflict. Okay, let's let's look at this. See 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7, right? There's no contradiction. If it is from God, it's aligning or in agreement with the word, with the Bible. Okay, so 1 John chapter 5 and uh, verse 7. Sorry, I'm just. What does it say? Hmm. Okay, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. There are three that bear witness, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay, these three are one, which means that, you know, the Word, the eternal Word, or the inspired Word, um, also, um, the written Word that is given for us, will not contradict or will not be in opposite of what the Holy Spirit says. Okay, so that's a good, that's an important check, right? Is what that person is saying, or when I prayed and I just felt that this is something that I should do, I believe that, you know, the Holy Spirit is leading me to say this or do this or make this decision. We go back to the Word of God. We check in the Word of God. Is there anything that is written there which is opposing that? Okay. So when we say the word of God, of course, you know, when we read, there are certain principles, like right? instructions, commandments, which God gives. So if the leading that I'm getting from the Holy Spirit, or when I think it is the Holy Spirit speaking, if it is um, something that is different from the commandment of God, the instruction of God, then I can, I have reason to doubt. Right? Is it, is it from God? I have reason to doubt it. Also, certain things could be, you know, would, is it in line with the character and nature of God? Is it in line with the character? Is it in line with the nature of God? So because maybe there is no explicit instruction, explicit commandment uh, that is there. Okay, which contradicts the leading of the Holy Spirit. The thing to ask is, you know, is it in line, does it align with the character, the nature, or the attributes of God? Is God like this? Okay, so that's something for us to check. Then, is Jesus glorified? Okay, John chapter 16, verse 13. Okay, let's, uh, let's read that. John 16 and verse 13, the Lord Jesus, um, while teaching about the Holy Spirit to the disciples, this is what he said, right? Uh, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So he will glorify the name of Jesus will be lifted up. It will not be dishonored. Okay. So in our decisions, um, we're saying, okay, I'm led by the Spirit. God is telling me to do this. As a result of that action, or the, as a result of my obedience to the leading, will Jesus be glorified or not? Okay, that's the thing. Okay. Will Jesus be glorified at the end of the day? So that's an important question to ask. In doing this, in saying this, in following through with this leading of the Holy Spirit, which I think is the leading of the Holy Spirit, is Jesus, will Jesus be glorified? Okay, so some very practical things that we can actually put it to use. Then, is it righteous? 
Very simple. Is it righteous? Is it the right thing? Right? Righteousness uh, according to the word of God, not righteous according to the world's standards, but according to the word of God. Is it righteous? So with all this, we know that, yeah, we can learn to be led by the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit of God. Okay. Um, if you can okay, go down to that. So, um, so we see this, you know, we see this illustration. Um, okay, what do you see there? Spirit, soul, body, what is it? What does it refer to? Do you see that? Spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, so this is the makeup of man, right? We as human beings, this is how we are made of. Now, how do we how do we get that thing, spirit, soul, and body? Any idea? How can you say, you know, I'm spirit, soul, and body? Three, three things. Why can't I just be body, you know? Does it say, does the Bible say anywhere that we are spirit, soul, and body? You know, just like, you know, how we need to be sure. Every believer is a minister. This is also another thing that we need to be sure, right? Because the Bible states this very openly. Okay? If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, okay? that's where we, we read that. Uh, one of the scriptures uh, where it directly talks about how we are spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Okay. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord. Okay, So one of the verses that talk about, you know, there are different scriptures again talking about the soul, about the spirit, about the body. But, you know, this brings it all together. It says that now may the God of peace himself sanctify you and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord. Okay, a quick uh, check. Okay, so all of us know what our body is, right? Our body enables us to live on the earth, right? Because uh, to, you know, to touch and feel and so on. So from the body, we receive certain things, information, okay? Yes or no? Okay, what information are you receiving? From your body. Your body could be telling you, hey, I'm hungry. We had, we had breakfast very early. Now I'm feeling hungry. Right? We receive information. Something. Your body is telling you. Feeling. Right? What else? You know, I, I see this. Oh, okay, this is metal. I touch it, it's strong, it's hard. Okay. I you know, take this water, it's it's liquid. So I'm able to sense, like feel, touch. Okay. Similarly, there are other senses, like I, I'm able to open my eyes, I'm able to see, right? So I'm getting information again. I'm getting information that okay, so many people are sitting here. Okay, this is what they are wearing. This is what they are doing. I'm getting in. How am I getting that information? Through my eyes. Right? Similarly, taste, touch, smell, hearing. I'm able to hear my own voice. I'm getting information, right, from my physical senses. What I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I touch, what I smell, etc. Okay. Similarly, we know that we are soul, there are two other parts of us, aspects of us, which is our soul and spirit. Okay, When you look at the spirit part of us, okay, the Bible says that the spirit, we are born again, we are new creations in our spirit. It is a spirit, you know, where, where the, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life. And, uh, you know, James talks about how um, as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works. Okay, so meaning 
that when the spirit leaves the body, the body does not function. Spirit without the body or is, or the body without the spirit is dead. So he's saying faith without works is dead. So he's talking about the spirit. Right? There's something which is the which is called the spirit of man. So when we look at um, the spirit, it's interesting to see that um, the spirit, just like our physical senses, how we can see, how we can hear, our spirit is capable of receiving information. Okay, so that's something that we need to understand. Our spirit is capable of receiving information. And we saw that the Holy Spirit, what does he do? He witnesses to Romans 8, 16, he witnesses to Okay, look at that verse again. Romans 8. Okay. What does it say? The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Okay, so which means that when he is bearing witness, what is bearing witness? It is to say something, right? Hey, um, you know, I I know. I was there in the morning when Aman had breakfast. He was in the dining hall. I saw him, and uh, he had breakfast. What did he have for breakfast? Kya kya? Alu paratha. He had three alu parathas. Two. But I'm saying, you know. I saw him eat three. I, I saw him eat the third one. What am I doing? I'm giving witness. And I'm giving that witness with my words. I'm telling the entire class, guys, I saw Aman have the third alu parata. I saw it in the eyes, and I'm witnessing. I'm the witness to it. Same way here, the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit. Okay, in our spirit man. So he brings that information. You're a child of God. He brings it to our spirit. So what does it mean? That means that our spirit is capable of receiving that information from the Holy Spirit. When God speaks, very important, right? Well, God, when God speaks, he can speak to us. We can actually, he can speak to us so that it is, uh, whatever he speaks is made clear in our physical senses also. He can, right? For example, we can audible, audibly hear the voice of God when he chooses to speak that way, right? Maybe there is a vision or a trance or something like that, you know, an open vision, physical manifestation. We see certain things. That's what happened, right? Daniel, uh, in Daniel's time, there was a hand that came and writing on the wall. Your time is numbered. He saw, right? It was there. Everybody saw. So God can, you know, show himself or communicate, which is, you know, which is possible for us to receive in our physical senses. But here we see that the Holy Spirit, he wants to witness in our spirit. So we need to be able to receive that information. We need to be able to be sensitive enough to receive that information. Let's look at a few verses here. Okay, uh, Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, 16, sorry. Um, okay, Acts 17. Uh, oops. Okay, what does it say? Now, when Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Something happened. Yeah, sure. Acts chapter 17 and verse 16. Okay, so Paul is now, you know, from Thessalonica. He goes to Berea and, you know, he's, he's in Athens. Um, so he sees that and it's and, and is, and is written here that his spirit was provoked. Okay, there was something that was happening in his spirit. Something deeper 
than just emotion. His spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. So something happened in the spirit realm, stirring up in the spirit. Okay, verse uh, chapter 18 and verse 5. Okay. Um, when Paul, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? So Paul was compelled by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, compelled, which means it was literally like a weight, okay, like feeling a weight, feeling a burden. He was compelled by the Holy Spirit. And most likely, it is something that he felt in his spirit. We see that oh, the Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. And that compelling thing, that weight that he felt, he was compelled by the Spirit to witness. So that's what we see here, 18. And um, we see that he was compelled by the Holy Spirit to um, share. Right? OK, let's look at uh, one more verse in Acts, Acts chapter 20. Verses 22 and verse 23. Okay. Verse 22, 23. Okay, again, this is about Paul. And um, and he's talking to the believers from the Ephesian church. Okay, and this is what he says. And see, now I go bound in the spirit. What is he saying? Bound. Bound bind bound means. Verse, verse 22. Acts bound 20. means tied. Bound means tied, exactly. So bound means tied, which means that he, in his spirit, he feels as if he is tied. Okay. So he's saying, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Okay. There is a tightening, there is a restricting feeling in his spirit. Why? He's saying, not knowing the things that will happen to me, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. So he's saying, you know, I'm going there to Jerusalem. I'm going to be imprisoned, right, um, for the sake of the gospel. Tribulations, there are tough times, difficult times are going to happen. So chains and tribulations await me. And in the Spirit, he feels that he is bound. So the Holy Spirit is testifying to him. Right? The Holy Spirit testifies that in every city he's going to face these challenges, face these tribulations. Right? So he is actually sensing that in his spirit. Okay. So we, we see that our spirit man is capable of receiving that information from the Holy Spirit. Right? So many times we are well aware of our natural senses. Yes or no? Yeah. We see, okay, I, this is what I see, this is what I hear, you know, I can, this is what I touch and feel. We are well aware of our natural senses. But are we aware or are we training ourselves to be aware of our spirit sense, what our spirit is sensing? Because the Holy Spirit can actually speak to our, um, to our spirit, right? So, um, just one second, sorry. Okay, so something that he is feeling, he's sensing in the uh, spirit man. Okay, let's look at the, uh, a couple more verses. Oops. Um, okay. Uh, see, this is something that we saw when we were looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Let's look at Ezekiel. Okay. Um, Ezekiel chapter... Chapter 3 and verse 14. Okay, Ezekiel 3, verse 14. Um, so the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. So the Holy Spirit lifted him up. Okay, so we we see that we we read that some of these prophets had these, or uh, people had these supernatural experience 
experiences, encounters with God. So he's saying this Holy Spirit actually lifted me up. Right? Physically, we read many times, lifted him up, you know, made him stand. Right? And he says, I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Okay, so there's something that he felt in his spirit. Right? In the heat of my spirit, the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Okay, so we see that. Then um, Ezekiel 11. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak, thus says the Lord, and so on. You know, I know the things that have come into your mind. So the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me. So how did how did Ezekiel, you know, the question is, how did Ezekiel knew know that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him? Right? Many times they write, no? And the hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord. So when, when I put my hand on your shoulder, you sense it. Right? You know, okay. Now somebody's put their hand on me. Similarly, here the prophet is saying, the hand of the Lord or the spirit of the Lord fell upon me. So he sensed something in his spirit. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me. Okay, So we see that this spirit sense, the spirit of man is capable of feeling. Okay, Just like physically we can actually touch and feel. The spirit is able to feel. Okay. And just like how we can see with our physical eyes, what do we see? We have vision, we can see. We can see pictures, we can see what is happening, nature, everything. Just like that, we see that there is a parallel. Okay, so what we are seeing is that just like how we can see or receive information in the physical or in the natural, we see that there is a parallel. What does parallel mean? Parallel lines in maths, right? One line, and next to that, one more line, right? Just next to it. Parable, earthly story, spiritual meaning, right? Side by side. So parable. So just like you know how we can see or hear or touch in the physical, there is a parallel in the spirit, you know, and it's very important. Right, that we get to know this because we will shut out a whole avenue of communication from God if we will not be sensitive in our spirit man. Okay, Look at this. Amos chapter 7, verse 1 to 8. Okay, um, let's read. Okay, it says, Amos chapter 7, verse 1. Thus the Lord God showed me. Okay. Thus the Lord God showed me. Okay. Now everyone look here. You know, I want to show you something. Okay. I'm, I'm showing you something. Can you see? Yeah. What do you see? Water bottle. And what is in it? Water. Is it full or half? Okay. <laughs> Same thing happened to Amos. Okay, chapter 7. He's saying, Thus the Lord God showed me. Behold, he formed locusts, swarms at the beginning of the late crop. Indeed, it was the late crop after the king's mowings. When he had fished out, and, and so on, you know. Verse 4. Thus the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord God called for conflict by fire. He's, he's showing him different things. And Ezekiel is able to, oh, sorry, Amos is able to see it. Okay. Then, seven, verse 7, Thus he showed me, Behold, the Lord stood on a wall, made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. Okay. So the Lord is showing him. He's able to see. Now, we can say, okay, maybe you saw physically, uh, you know, not, not in his spirit. But the fact is that when the Lord speaks, when, when God, the Holy Spirit, speaks, He can speak to our spirit man. He testifies, He witnesses, right? 
And uh, we see in Paul's case, he was stirred up, provoked in his spirit. There were things that were, he was compelled by the Holy Spirit, right? So we see all these things happening. So it's something that is visual, something that we see, okay? But it's not physical. It's something that we sense or see in our spirit, okay? Let's look at one more. Um, yeah. um, was there a question? Um, sorry, I'm not able to hear. Gertrude, um, Gertrude, you're unmuted. Is there a question? No, Pastor. Okay. Uh, somebody's got their hand up. So oh, if you sorry, have a question. Yeah, can, yeah. can you, um, I know you were saying about Ezekiel 11.5, and can you explain that a little bit about, um, again, about the spirit? Can feel. Can you talk about that? Can you explain it again? Yeah. Uh, just one second, uh, Can you just increase the monitor volume, please? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question, please, in a minute? Um, yeah. Go ahead, Shan. Yeah. Um, so where it says Ezekiel level five about the spirit fell upon me, and you explaining. Yeah. Um, I wrote that the spirit can feel. Can you just explain explain that again, please? Yeah, so so he uh, Ezekiel, uh, you know, in Ezekiel we see that the spirit of the Lord fell upon. Ezekiel says that the spirit of the Lord fell upon me. So the thing is, when or we also see the hand of the Lord came upon. So when somebody puts their hand or falls upon, we can feel it, right? So similarly, so here Ezekiel is saying this. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God fell upon me. It is something that he felt, right? And just like how we've been studying about how the Holy Spirit can speak to our senses, our spirit sense, the Holy Spirit can testify and witness and so on. So we can say that this, the, 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 the man of God, the prophet, experienced that, experienced the Spirit of God, the weight of the Holy Spirit. Um, or the hand of the Holy Spirit, or Spirit hand of God on him. Just like how we can sense um, physically, um, we can also sense uh, in our spirit. Right. So that's that's okay, what I was thank saying. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, we, so the next thing is about seeing. You know, seeing is something that we, uh, something that is visual. Okay. So we see that um, the Bible is full of these references where, where the, where the, God asks the prophets, okay, what do you see? Uh, it shows someone, shows something, and then he says, um, uh, what do you see, right? Uh, and then he shows something, and then he gives an interpretation of that, and so on. Um, so, so when we look at Job chapter 33, okay, it's a very interesting verse, Job 33. Um, let's just go there. Job 33 verse yeah. 14, right? Okay, so here's, here's something. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Okay? In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep comes upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. Okay, so, you know, so we, we see a couple of other avenues that in a dream, in a vision. Okay, so it says you know, God may speak one way or another, in a dream, in a vision. So in a dream, obviously the, the person is sleeping, and in a dream, uh, you know, I'm sure we've all had dreams. It seems so real, yeah. It seems so real, and uh, it's it's a video, right? It's pictures moving. Um, once I had one funny dream. It's like uh, you know, in this dream, I saw two people who looked the same, twins, right? And they had this cap like how uh, people wear in Turkey. Right, these it's called a fez, I think. Anyway, they were over that, and uh, so they were saying, you know, and I somehow sensed that these two were First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, 
Okay, so these twins looking exactly the same, wearing that hat. I just sense that they are first Thessalonians and second Thessalonians, and and they are saying, you know, you never read us. <laughs> right? This is a funny dream. So I just woke up and said, okay, I need to read first Thessalonians. So, you know, we might have to, not all dreams are from God. Uh, I don't know whether this was, you know, this is certainly making me read the Bible, um, but you know. We see here scripture that God can, God does speak in a dream, right? And in a dream, it is visual. It is a video. It is a visual pictures, moving pictures, conversations, all that, right? And we receive it in our spirit, man, right? Um, what else? Visions. Vision is again a picture. Um, uh, it could be, it could be, you know, when we are when our eyes are closed, or it could be. A trance, like when our eyes open, we read about that in Acts chapter 10. Right? Acts chapter 10, we read about Peter. Peter is hungry. He's in the house of this tanner. Right? He's hungry. He's waiting. For food is being prepared. What happens? What does the Bible say? He saw a vision. He fell into a trance says and he saw a vision right? which means that uh, you know a trance is typically uh, eyes are open right he's he's unaware of his physical surroundings his eyes are open and he sees a vision and obviously it is god reaching out to him and giving him a very important message right? what did he see in that vision on big bed sheet, a lot of animals, which a Jew is not supposed to eat, right? It's not part of the diet. And he sees that being lowered. And what voice did he hear? Yeah. Kill and eat. And three times, right? And and Peter's response was, you know, no, I should not. You know, it's not right for me. These are unclean animals. I should not. Right? And he's thinking about it. And he and it's a very important message. Right? Because something is going to happen immediately after that. He is going to be invited to the house of Cornelius. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is, can I eat? Yeah. yeah. So so the, the message, of course, was symbolic for Peter, saying that what God has pronounced as clean, you should not call it unclean. Okay. So... Which means now, and because of that, he went, he stayed. Uh, so definitely, it was symbolic. Okay. Then um, your question about you know, can I eat that meat? Okay, we read in Romans. Okay, so where the Bible says, right? okay, eat whatever is sold in the meat market without asking any questions. Um, right. So you can, but of course, we need to. You know, the other thing is, is it nutritious? Is it helping us? Is it good for our health? All those questions are there. But, uh, you know, we see that in the New Testament that there, there's nothing like that. But these dietary laws, interestingly, we see that it's for a purpose. You know, some of these things are unclean. Uh, some of these things have, I mean, these animals have, a, have their own diet. Um, so, yeah, it, it's up to you whether you want to eat. <laughs> but don't look down on others who are not eating that, right? That's what the Bible says, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think we'll stop here, and uh, we'll continue with, um, you know, uh, hearing from the Holy Spirit. Again, a very interesting subject, right? Uh, we'll continue next week, right? God bless.